Now I prove another rather elementary, rather simple property of semi rings and rings. Uh, it says this: if I start with the semi ring S, and if you don't know what the semi ring is, you have to watch the previous video. That's where we define these structures. If I start with a semi ring, and if I build on the top of the semi ring this structure like this, R, a collection of all finite disjoint unions of elements of semi-ring, then this new structure will be a ring. Again, if you don't know what the ring is, you have to look the video before. All right, look at the proof. The proof is rather routine, but uh, even on this routine proof, it's a good opportunity for me to demonstrate the way we deal with these structures and also uh, the way, the nice neat way of presenting routine proofs. For instance, here we will use the method of mathematical induction, although it will be rather hidden first. <coughs> so let's just try to do the proof. Remember that if something uh, if we need to show that some if we need to show that something is a ring, we have to show that if I start with two elements of this collection, two elements of such collection, of course in this particular case these elements will have such a representation. It will be disjoint unions of some a case and B S and these A case and B S all of them will be the elements of my initial semi ring and our job will be to show that actually um, actually the our job will be I'll just open out here that the set difference of these two elements will also be presentable as a disjoint elements of the Semi ring that will ensure that actually that will that will ensure if we, if we show this that will ensure that that the set difference belongs to the structure. If we show that, let me just make let me make this move here, move here. That will show this. Of course, we have to show this, so I'll put a question mark over it. We still have to show this. The other thing which we have to show is the that uh, the other thing which we have to show is that also also. Uh, Union belongs to this structure. All right, so again, uh, the proof will show, I mean, we fix two elements from this collection R. Both of these elements have this representation. And we will show that the set difference will have such a similar representation, which will show us that the set difference in R and the union also has such a representation, although I didn't say it explicitly. Uh, and so it also element of R. We showed in the previous video that actually just checking these two, the set difference and the union is enough because the intersection will follow immediately. Now, in fact, in this proof, uh, first I'll, I would like to open this identity. It's again another set identity. Uh, it's another set identity which uh, can be established the way we normally establish identities between sets. And it says to you that the union of two elements, it is a disjoint union of first element and the set difference of the second and the first. If you believe this identity, then you will realize that actually this implication, which we have to show, will follow as soon as we have this implication. Because your A is a disjoint element of disjoint union of elements of S. The set difference, given that this is established, is also disjoint union of some elements of S. So the disjoint union of disjoint unions, it's another disjoint union. So we know that this is from we know that this is from R. We know that we will know that this is from R as well. We will know this if we will know this if this implication is true, that it, it will be true soon, and that's why we have this implication. So all I'm saying is that actually, just to show this, all we have to do, we have to establish this implication. 
that's what we're going to do. And that's where we need a method of ma the method of mathematical induction. Uh, to do that, I'll introduce a, it's like a uh, like an auxiliary set, which I will call R sub m, and that will be again it will be a structure like this. It will be the collection of all set differences where a comes from your R from this structure, and the second set is a joint union of elements of S, but this time I take a preset number of elements in this joint union. So the, the m, this index m, indicates how many elements in this joint union uh, I take. Okay, and we take we take the sets for all m's bigger or equal than one. Now, look at this. Uh, the whole proof actually based on a series of set identities, and that's another set identity which I claim true. Again. Establishing this, uh, set, uh, establishing this set identity, I'll leave for you as an exercise, and it should be done the way we do set identities, and we prove set identities, and I showed you one example. If I have such set identity here, B1, one of the elements of S, A, K, they all come from here. If I have such identity, then look what happens. The left-hand side is the element of R1. The left hand side is the element of R1, but the right hand side, the right hand side, what can we say about the right hand side? Well, we can say this AK and B1, all elements of my semi ring. According to the properties of a semi ring, a set difference can always be represented as a disjoint union of elements of semi ring. For each individual bracket here, there, will be, there could be different C's here and there could be different number of such C's, but still, every individual bracket will be a disjoint union. Disjoint union of disjoint unions is just one huge disjoint union. And all of them, all elements of that disjoint union, will be elements of S. So this right hand side is in fact belongs to R. So what we see is actually every element of R1 collection is just the element of R collection. This is nothing else but just we say that R1 is a subset of R. Now, next, what I claim, I claim another set identity. This time I claim this set identity again. I recommend you checking this identity with full details. Now, if I have such identity, then on the left hand side, what do I have on the left hand side? Here I have this element, obviously, is from Rm. Now, this bracket, look at this. This is the element of R1. It's the A is a disjoint union of elements of S, and B1 is just one single element of S. So this is this one is, and I have it here somewhere. This one is this one individual bracket is the element of R1. But we know that R1 actually is a subset of R, so in fact this bracket is just R rather than R1. And we have here element of R from which we subtract, as a set difference, M take one elements of S. So in fact this whole B, the whole one, in fact belongs to Rm take one. This whole right hand side, and we just established with you, I just said here that the whole thing belongs to the Rm take one. So the conclusion of this observation will be that Rm collection is a subset of Rm take one collection. In fact, what just happened, that's the just the method of mathematical induction, isn't it? This was the base step, the base of my induction, and this is the step of my induction. Collectively, as a conclusion of this mathematical induction, we see that all of these RM sets is just subsets of my initial set R. But B, but the set difference, this set difference, set difference between A and B is in fact a member of RM set. So we conclude that actually the set difference is in fact belongs to R. 
So we can kill this question mark. And the whole proof is done.